I bet you didn't think that in such a small country like Israel, you could go from full desert view to snowy mountaintops in just two hours. But here I am. I'm standing here right now at the Mount Hermon Ski and Snowboarding Resort, which is actually Israel's only ski resort. I have no idea how to ski or snowboard, so I'm going to link up with one of the instructors here at the resort, and this should be interesting. Welcome to the Hermon! Welcome, Welcome to the Hermon! This is a very unique place. Why? Because it's the only one. It's uh, it's not Europe. It's not huge slopes. But as I said, it, it's got. I can't take any good skier anywhere here. There will be a slope to challenge him. You know what I mean? But the main thing is, it's the atmosphere uh, of of uh, you know the way people meet up here. The uh, I think the culture as well is good fun. But the mountain itself, as I said, there's a, there's a slope for everyone. Perhaps not five kilometers. It's a couple of kilometers, but it's we, we have it. We're not going to on the plane to do check-in and ski. We're here, we're next home, or Tel Aviv, or whatever. It's here, okay? Maybe it's a bit crowded sometimes, but on a day like this, it's the perfect place. And I'm very, very happy that I grew up here. Yeah. A lot of people get like shocked that it's a two-hour drive from like the beach to yes. this mountainous, beautiful. Israel is a very special place. You get the lowest point on earth, in the Dead Sea. Then you drive a couple of hours from desert to Tel Aviv on the beach. Then you come further in, you get the north, the springs. It's plenty to do. And it's small, you know, and there's obviously the historic stuff. Here in Israel, that's what I love about our country. You can go from one side to the other and have several uh, weather. Yeah. What type of activities do you guys have here? So the first one of course is the chairlift that takes you from the bottom station to the top station and then you can have a full view of the mountain. The other one we have alpine coaster that you can control the speed while you drive it. It's a, it's a nice one. Uh, another one is of course the plastic sleds for kids and kids love it and they have uh, two areas for this at the uh, top station and at the bottom station of the sky. Also we have a new attraction which is called Sky Rider that we built only in the summer. It's a navigation uh, attraction that takes you to a round trip for 350 meters. The skiers need a lot of snow, half a meter for, for skiing. The visitors can, uh, can have only like few centimeters for uh, just having fun with the snow. So a lot of Israelis are coming only really to see the snow because we are not used to it because we are a very warm country. So as soon as they hear that we have few centimeters of snow, they are coming with the kids, with the equipment, with the carrots for the snowmen and they're coming with all the stuff with, from the house and they're coming in and as you can see, people just love it, especially the kids. People often think that there's not too much to do in Israel in the winter time. Now, while most of the year the Israeli forecast shows sunny skies and not too low of temperatures, there's about 50 days out of the year where Mount Hermon Ski Resort is open for everyone. This gorgeous, powdered sugar looking view is visited by around 300,000 visitors a year, generally between January and March. In a good season, we had 370,000 um, visitors and skiers. Yeah, that depends on the snow. Uh, depends about the, about the uh, uh, days of ski that we have. Last year, we had only 13 years of uh, ski season. The previous, on, on 2017, we had 54 days of skiing. So it really depends how long is the ski season. In Israel, we call it the eyes of Israel because this is the highest place in Israel and you have a view. And it's also uh, in the borders between Lebanon and Syria and Israel. It's a very unique place. I'll let you guys in on my ski lesson. But remember, these are just the basics. Explanation on the skis. These are the edges. They stop us and they make us turn, okay? If you're flat, it goes fast, okay? And if you're on the edges, turning against the slope, then slow you down and do the turns. Forward and up and up. As always, I'm doing this to lift the weight of the tail of the ski. You get that? Wide now, stop. Fantastic. I got a fantastic. 
These next keywords are all you need to really know when learning how to ski for your first time. And let me tell you, it's gonna be pretty hard to forget these. We are ready to ski, people. Let's get going. Okay, wait. Pizza french fries, pizza french fries, pizza french fries, pizza french fries. This is a very special mountain, you know, because if you can ski in the Hirma mountain, you can ski anywhere in the world. Have fun even if you fall over. It's with fun, you don't fall over with fear, it's different. Fooled you! First of all, I don't know what I look like, so let's hope it's cute. Second of all, good luck, buddy. I wish I could help you. I really do. Third of all, it is so much hotter than I expected it to be. Who would have thought I'd be skiing? Not even my mom or my grandma. How was I as a first time skier? Do you really want to know? Yes. <laughs> I think it's the perfect start. It's, it's, for me, it's very easy. I didn't have to pick you up all the time. You were just Natural quite dynamic, you know? You and the, but yeah. All right, well, thank you so much. You're I really welcome. appreciate Enjoy it. Enjoy the rest of your day. I'm going to ski down again. There are so many Israelis that have never seen snow in their lives. So other than the obvious reason for coming to the Chilmon, which would be to ski or snowboard, many people come to play with the snow, build snowmen, make the trip to the top of the mountain to see the gorgeous view and simply enjoy. You go up there and you have a 3D views over Syria, Lebanon points, and the rest of Israel. So this is, it's, it's, it's the most important strategic fun point in the, the whole of Israel. Okay, so I attempted to ski, keyword attempted, but I'm looking to try out some of the other activities that don't involve falling over slash working out. Someone decided to tell me only after I rented my ski equipment that if you don't wear sunglasses, you might go blind. So people, pro tip, wear your sunglasses. I'm so nervous we're going on this ski lift right now. It's gonna take us to the top, top, top of a mountain where you can literally see everything below us. I'm shaking, I'm shaking, I cannot. Look at this view. I made it to the top of the mountain. Don't ask me how, I have a fear of heights. I really don't know what I'm doing here, but this breathtaking view. Fairly colder here on top of the mountain. There are hundreds of hundreds of people here. Kids, teenagers, adults, sledding down, making snowmen, throwing snowballs, doing all the fun activities that you could do, but on the top of the mountain, I'm trying to get down from this mountain right now. This is giving me a little anxiety, but it's such a beautiful view. I just got to the Alpine Coaster, which is a mountain sled that goes about 28 miles per hour. Now, the interesting part is that I'm the one controlling the speed. So, this is gonna be, this is gonna be a wild one. Let's try it out. Wait, I think you can have to go on this. All right, so how do I, do, wait, excuse me. Huh? just kidding, there's that guy. <laughs> I hate roller coasters. I hate anything resembling to roller coasters. I can't believe I'm doing this. Oh. This is what this job will do to me, I swear. Bye guys, see you. That was such a fun experience. I didn't go too fast because I got really nervous. <laughs> but it was great, so freeing. You get to see everything from the top of the mountain. Wow. I'm having such a great day. <laughs> so I may or may not have a crazy fear of heights, but that didn't stop me. Now, we've shown you countless reasons why the Chilmon is such a unique and special place, but I bet you didn't think that there'd be anything to do here in the summer. Not a lot of people know that we are also open in the summer. First, we have the chairlift that 
that goes uh, on and on at the summer as well. We have guided tours for people that takes you to a spot that you can't go by yourself. And then you have a view to Syria and Lebanon and you have a tour that explain about the situation here in Israel with the Syrian border, with the civil war in, uh, in Syria. Now this I didn't know. There are a lot of evangelist Christians that believe that the transfiguration of Jesus uh, actually took place over here and not in Mount Tavo. So in the summer, uh, a lot of them are coming over here, take the chairlift to the top station, make a prayer over there, and then they go to another place for, which is holy for them. Hmm, that sounds interesting. I'll definitely have to come back here in the summertime. But for now, I've had one of the longest days ever. I'm heading straight to my hotel. I'll see you guys in the morning.